My name is Philip Tan. I'm the creative director for the MIT Game Lab. As a research group, we look at a variety of different areas in games, including the design of games, the business and technology of games, how people actually play both in groups and as individuals. We study games of the past, the present, and we prototype some of the games of the future. Digital interactive media in games has grown tremendously over the past two decades. Uh, we're making games all the time. Games are all around us, but we don't necessarily always understand how or why people play games and what the meaning they derive from those games is. This is where game studies can really fill in the gaps. We can draw connections between player motivations and player behaviors to paint a more detailed portrait of players. For the past six years, we've created opportunities for students from MIT and the New England area to work together on games from concept all the way to release. These are research games, games that are designed to fulfill or study some sort of research question. And what we found are that our most fruitful projects come from collaborations with people outside of the MIT Game Lab, like our faculty from other departments in the Institute, to researchers from other universities, to people from other organizations. My name is Rick Eberhardt. I'm the studio manager at the MIT Game Lab. I also served as the game director in summer of 2010 on the game Elude, a game created by students at the MIT Game Lab and made for researchers uh, Doris Roosh and Tia Tilla Saranoglu from Mass General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. So the research goal for Elude was twofold. It was to demonstrate metaphor in games because one of our researchers, Doris Roosh, is interested in metaphors such as how do you make a game about love and how do you make a game about loss. And the other research question we had was, how do you make a game for, about depression? And how do you make a game for health about depression? Uh, so our other researcher, Tia Attila Sirinoglu, is interested in making a game to be used in this practice, but not necessarily actually played by a patient. Instead, it'd be played by the friends and family of the depressed patient, let's say a younger sibling, uh, to better understand what emotional state uh, their sibling is in, um, and to better understand just what depression is. Back in 2009, I believe it was, I saw Doris, uh, Doris Roosh uh, presenting on her game, Dan um, Ecclesia. And we met after that presentation and we talked about um, the role of video games in, um, in delivering uh, child and adolescent psychiatry treatments. And, uh, and we thought about maybe putting together a game uh, targeting depression would be a good idea. And uh, we started working on it and in 2010, following a process of, I guess, several months of some intense meetings and uh, endeavors, we came up with the game Elude. The pre-production phase for Elude was quite long, almost two semesters. I prototyped ideas. I met regularly with Attila to make sure that all of these ideas were clinically actually correct. And we identified this model of depression throughout these uh, two semesters pre-production and actually gave the team a skeleton to base their design on. And the skeleton was, you come in, you have um, a normal life here in this normal state, and then you can jump on the tree branches to reach the happy state in the trees. And the bad stuff is the, in the lurking in the undergrowth of the forest, and it comes after you and it drags you down. And so presenting the skeleton to the team when they came in, uh, was the best way to ensure that the final product would meet our criteria and would meet the clinical idea of depression that we pursued with this game. We brought in Attila regularly and had him talk to the team and made sure that every single decision we made was still part of this vision, was still coherent with our overall model of depression. Um, a good starting point for a game on depression was, well, what it will entail. Uh, common approaches could have been uh, simulating depression, 
what a depressed person would look like. But we wanted to go one step beyond that, and we wanted to uh, convey what the feel, what the feeling of depression uh, uh, be like. And uh, so we, we, we had to recreate perhaps a depressed state in the, um, in, in the game itself, which is in fact um, an oxymoron, you can't, uh, because depression in and of itself is inability to play. Uh, but that was our challenge, and in the end, uh, what we wanted was a game that people with depression or relatives and friends and families of people with depression could play this game and have an understanding, perhaps, of what a depression really feels like. Our client, Dr. Serenolo, had never made a game before and wasn't really aware of what the game development process was like. He'd been to Games for Health and he'd seen and talked to uh, game developers before, but never been in the process. Once the game development process started in the summer, like all of our other product owners, um, we let them know what the schedule would be like. Um, we talked to them a little bit about how the game design process at the lab works, so which weeks we denote for pre-production, which weeks are, are production, what those terms mean, when their feedback is needed, and when we can make changes based on their feedback. At the end, what we came up with in the game was a um, young adolescent boy who is roaming into this forest, this fantastic looking forest, um, lots of trees and leaves, and the, uh, the boy is climbing the tree, walking, jumping from branch to branch, and it comes into these flowers or uh, birds flying through, and at one point, despite what you, whatever you do in the game, sometimes it really gets dark and gloomy, and it's just the nature of depression and a chronic condition like depression that despite sometimes even the treatment things don't go really well and in this uh, this game I think it really captured that aspect of depression that it does get better with what you do but sometimes even though you do what you can things take a bit more time than uh, we desire for them to get better and that was the main I think uh, one of the main goals we wanted to have uh, uh, we wanted to make sure we conveyed in this game. And I think in, in our collaboration, we, um, if I may say so, we did that just fine. Over the past six years at the MIT Game Lab, we've worked with a variety of partners to help identify and answer central questions to their game-based projects. We are interested in people who are looking at games differently from how we are looking at games right now to give us those problems and those questions and those ideas and to, for the opportunity to work together with different people all over the world to create new kinds of games and new kinds of interventions the perspective that they bring to our lab is invaluable. They understand their domain better than we do, and they've seen an opportunity for games to change the way how their entire field operates. We know how to design games that deal with tricky research problems, so we look forward to the opportunity for to collaborate with people from other fields. We want to help people rethink their challenges through games. We want to help them explore some of the complexities of the field and perhaps share some of the fun that they have in their work. So if you think that games are a powerful medium that could change the way how you and your colleagues work, please do get in touch with us. We should talk.